Rod Ferguson has just come out and said Diablo 4 will not be on Game Pass. They have no plans for it to be on Game Pass. What does this mean? Well, the Activision Blizzard King deal has not closed yet. So, of course, to him, this game will not be on Game Pass. However, if the deal does close, most certainly it will be on Game Pass. What is he saying here? Well, he's projecting the idea that many of us have been talking about for a long time, that waiting to purchase games that you think are going to be on a subscription service absolutely kills these developers, kills these IPs. Now, you could say, well, once they're owned by Microsoft and they get a big bag of cash, who cares? You pay a dollar, you pay $15 for it. Here's something to think about. This game was developed without being under Microsoft. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars to create this game. What will their next game be under Microsoft in a subscription service that does not have the amount of subscribers to offset the cost? Because when you add in other costs beyond just buying third-party deals for the service versus how much money you're making, of course you can say we're making money, but when you add in all of the other costs, the $69 billion about to be spent, the money already spent for Bethesda, when you add all of that into it, Game Pass is not profitable, period. So what do we do? Well, we're not going to spend $200 million, $300 million on the next Diablo. We're going to have to cut things back and scale things back. Scope, vision, creativity, all will suffer. And he's projecting that here by saying, we have no plans to be in Game Pass. So please, Xbox community, buy our game. Don't sit there and wait for some deal to close and potentially kill the sales that we would have otherwise had if you aren't sitting there waiting for something to happen in a subscription service. If you're somebody who's excited for Diablo 4, you love Diablo, I cannot understand the idea of sitting and waiting months to potentially years for a deal to close rather than purchase one singular game. If you love it, spend the money, play it. You're talking about hundreds of hours of gameplay here. If that's not worth $70, I don't know what is. And if your only answer to this is who cares, once Microsoft owns Activision, Blizzard, and King, it's a dollar, it's $15 a month. Why should I care about the money? Microsoft's giving them a big bag of cash and I'm getting a game for $1 or $15. Think about the cost of this game before Microsoft owns them. He's telegraphing this by tweeting this. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the scope and the scale of this game and it cannot be created under Microsoft in a subscription service without the amount of subscribers to offset costs, which they do not have. So all of these huge AAA games that cost hundreds of millions of dollars sound great once they're in Game Pass, but all of them are being created without being part of Game Pass right now. These developers are spending hundreds of millions of dollars once they're under the Game Pass umbrella. They've got to conform to cost out versus profit in, and the only way to conform is to be scaled back the money spent has to be less than the money spent right now to develop this game, which is why Rod Ferguson is saying we have no plans for it to be in Game Pass because we need the money. We need the purchase at full price, the $70 price point for the huge AAA game. So the caring about this stuff comes in when you think about the fact that you want these big, huge AAA games to continue. You want them not to be hampered by cost. You want them to take that risk. You want them to push those boundaries and then put the game out there. And if it is a fantastic AAA RPG, hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay, why not give them the return on that risk? The $70 price point for these games is a must for them to continue to be the huge epic in scale and scope type of games that people want sure double a sure single a will be easier to conform to a subscription service but the idea that these games can exist under a subscription service is just not going to work at least right now when you factor in all of the cost all of them 69 billion dollars plus bethesda's money plus the money for third-party deals and Game Pass, plus the money spent just to keep Game Pass servers running, they are not making a profit, period. Things will have to be scaled back. The creative process should never be scaled back. The scope shouldn't be scaled back. And the money invested for risk and return shouldn't be scaled back. And that's why 
you should care about this. So I like to end videos like this by saying this is my opinion based on limited information. If you believe your opinion is different, let me know in the comment section below. If you actually believe that $69 billion cost plus Bethesda cost, let's say $8 billion, I forget how much Bethesda was, plus the cost of third-party deals to keep games coming into Game Pass, plus the cost of keeping Game Pass going, plus the cost of continually funding those first parties under Microsoft into Game Pass over the course of entire generations equals profit, then I would more than be interested in learning a few things as to why I'm wrong. Thanks for watching the video. Think about liking and subscribing, and I will see you all in the next one.